The question we need to ask ourselves is, how can I support Jehovah's anointed king, like Jonathan did? Do you see why we say that? Well, how do you support Jehovah's anointed king today? Here are two important ways we do so. Number one, Acts 10.42. Acts 10.42. It reads that Jesus, the anointed king, ordered us to preach to the people and to give a thorough witness. So when you preach, you are actively supporting Jehovah's anointed king because you obey his command. But preaching requires patience, as we saw this morning, does it not? Because we will have to preach whatever the difficulties until Jesus says it's over. So our full efforts in the disciple-making work are really showing Jesus that we support him as the anointed king. But Jesus is also the head of the congregation. How does he expect us to support him in this role as the head of the congregation? Well, that brings us to the second way we support him. Hebrews 13, 17. Please turn to Hebrews 13, 17. Be obedient to those who are taking the lead among you and be submissive for they are keeping watch over you as those who will render an account so that they may do this with joy and not with sighing for this would be damaging to you. Be obedient, be submissive to those who are taking the lead among you, to the elders in the congregation. In other words, cooperate with the elders. Do you see how this is us uh, supporting uh, Jesus as the anointed king? Well, we said this is the head of the congregation. Jesus organized congregations because he wants to take care of you. And one way he wants to take care of you is by making sure that there are well-qualified elders appointed in the congregation to support you. So when we see the direction, the scriptural counsels of the elders as if coming from Jehovah, well then don't you think we say, we're saying to Jesus that we see the arrangement, we see things his way, Jehovah's way, and that we're ready to support that. It tells him that. That's how we support him in the congregation. If you say so, Sebastian, we've just been listening to Sebastian Del Gran, who is a Bethelite from the Fishkill facilities of Jehovah's Witnesses. He's taking us through the symposium item, better to be patient than to be haughty in spirit. Imitate Jonathan, not Absalom. And again, it's all about obedience, isn't it? Obey, obey, obey. Obey without question. Never mind if it doesn't make sense to you. Never mind if the direction's actually going to hurt you in some way or cause you some kind of either inconvenience or outright damages, you know. You've just got to go along with whatever you're told. Maybe you're told by your elders that it would not be a good thing for you to pursue legal recourse against someone who's abused you that certainly happened in the past according to this logic you would just have to go along with it wouldn't you if you're an abuse survivor oh my elders have told me to just forgive and forget i need to forgive freely my abuser and how can i be forgiving them if i'm reporting them to the police i'd better just go along with the direction i'm receiving that's where this sort of advice takes you. And he's quoting there from Hebrews 13, verse 17, be obedient to those taking the lead among you. Clearly, Hebrews 13, verse 17, wasn't written with congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in mind. Manifestly, that's the case. This is yet again presuppositional argumentation, Sebastian Del Gran, or the writers of the outline he's reading from, are asking the audience to presuppose that this is God's organization in the last days, that it is effectively a continuation of the arrangement set up in the New Testament for Christian worship. And therefore, when it's talking about those taking the lead among you, it's talking about elders, circuit overseers, governing body members in the here and now. 
manifestly that is, well, it's just wrong. It's just a wrong application of scripture. And yet it's being used to push this incredibly harmful rhetoric that doesn't just require Jehovah's Witnesses to be obedient, it demands them to be submissive. Be obedient, be submissive to those who are taking the lead among you, to the elders in the congregation. In other words, cooperate with the elders. So it's not just about obeying the elders and cooperating with the elders, you need to be submissive to the elders. And doesn't this run contrary to everything they say about elders serving the congregation? Oh, elders are Christian shepherds. They are beneath the congregation. They're there to serve members of the congregation and help them spiritually whenever called upon, whenever summoned for help. The elders are there to serve the congregation. Well, doesn't this talk by this Bethelite, Sebastian Del Gran, really highlight the fact that it's never been the case that elders serve the congregation? Rather, the congregation serves the elders.